This week's video will be comprised of outtakes and little odds and ends. I hope you enjoy, thanks for being here, and welcome. First, we're going to start out in New York and New Jersey. I've said before I was born in New Jersey, and if I hadn't been, a lot of this wouldn't make sense today. Especially the weird feeling I got, how old and large everything was. I don't know what it is with Ellis Island. It seems like a Mandela effect to many of us. We thought Ellis Island was where the Statue of Liberty was. And here, if we zoom in to Ellis Island, we see this square little city. This, we're told, is a hospital. And the Statue of Liberty is on Liberty Island. And there's another one over here called Governor's Island with a star fort. Hello, star fort. And they call this star fort Fort J, looking massive, having a canal no longer in use, all kinds of plug holes, as we discussed in a past video, and here they've put a few cannons as props, and there we go. And here we have the Ellis Island Immigration Experience. Ah yes, the Immigration Experience. This looks like a small man with a beard. And is this a scary child in terror? And what is this massive building doing on Ellis Island? Well, this is that hospital. New immigrants landing at Ellis Island. The big building in the background is the new hospital. Just opened, fresh. There she is, 1902. And the beginning of one era and the end of another. Here's another building on Ellis Island. Handling the immigrant at Ellis Island. Seems a little savage. And again, an oversized building. And how about this? Castle Garden. The exterior view of Castle Garden from the battery. Again, we discussed the battery in a past video. And here we go. This was the first immigrant's landing point before Ellis Island. The Castle Gate, of course. The Castle Gate at the Castle Garden. Governor's Island will replace Castle Garden. They're saying this in 1890. Was there a problem with this fine building? Again, horse and buggy. Their depiction, not mine. Yes, there was a problem with this. Something about a legal skirmish on who controls what island. The Castle Garden was originally a fort in the chief defense of New York City. Here you go. The original fort. It's very important that the military fort kind of looked like a circus, but rather than a tent, something permanent. The massive masonry of its first walls still stands. And the deep portholes. Although many years, no cannons have frowned through them, still gaze sinisterly. After it ceased to be occupied, it was turned into a place of amusement. And under its roof, some famous lady's voice was first heard in America. Blah, blah. Unbelievable. Just laying out the script in a nutshell. Even with this castle garden. America's first immigrant's landing point. In the last article, they spoke of handling them. How to handle the immigrants. Or the new inheritors. So very exciting. Just a little tidbit and again the new sweet star fort here fort j just right across the way from the statue of liberty star fort 
which they don't call a fort. They just call it a pedestal. And here's a little something by Emily Suzanne again. I showed this video of hers in a past video of mine, but I didn't really talk about it much. In this segment, I just wanted to do that. This will be a quick segment. We asked for permission from the cat gods. So this was a video by Emily Suzanne. And it's a video on space. And I love space. I always did, until eventually I was crushed by the mainstream explanation we're given for all the phenomenon in space. But I still love it. Here Emily has posted a time lapse. I'm not sure what city this is. Oh, over Fairview, Utah. And here I'll show it to you real quick. We'll just kind of run through it. Bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum. And just fascinating. Of course, many of you have seen where you do this same kind of time lapse over the North Pole, and everything will do like a spiral. Everything will circle around Polaris, or the Pole Star, the North Pole Star giving the impression that everything is spinning around this point. But here, here everything is just moving along, like a backdrop, like a revolving backdrop, stage set, Truman Show Dome. And I love it, just love, love, love. I could watch every detail of this. And there's a little cloud line back here. It seems like they disappear at this point. And I probably watched this video ten times when she published it, just a few minutes ago. And I just had to share, immediately. So I'm looking at these shooting stars, shooting around, and those are the most fascinating to me right now. Here I've paused it, super cool. And what am I noticing here? Well, the sky is spinning, and it's pattern here, everything moving at the same pace. And I think I've told you all the story where I asked God one night, what are the stars? And suddenly a star was upon me, just over my head, bright and beautiful, and not like a craft or a UFO or something, just some beautiful orb, like some life form. And I followed the star and followed it, and then it just parked it parked itself in the sky and was just a star. If I hadn't seen it fly over my head perfectly from behind me to straight forward and straight north, and it parked itself in the sky. And as I watch these stars all move in sync, even though we would be told, for instance, the dimmer ones are millions of miles further away and that they would all have different distance, they all seem to move in sync. And today I just want to focus on the shooting stars. As everything moves in a very equal and similar pattern, these shooting stars are defying everything. Not moving around what we would be told is a curvature, but just moving straight as arrows. And what I'm noticing is a back and forth. Back and forth. And maybe occasionally, I, I think I saw one go down, and never seeing a shooting star go up. And let me know if you've ever seen a shooting star shoot up. And this is a really interesting star pattern here. Look at this star pattern. Can I zoom? I can't zoom. Look at that. Let's watch it move above the tree. There we go. Look at that really different. Here we get the best view of it, up in the corner. And you see what I mean? I could waste a lot of time looking at all the different parts of this video, but what interests me is this back and forth firing. Most of them coming from the right side of the screen towards us, and then somebody on our left shoulder shooting out this way. The shooting star, the shooting projectile. And again, like I said, I watched it over and over, and it just seems like kind of a back and forth battle. Here, this one is like red when it approached this point. I encourage you to watch her video. And this was meant to just be a random little bonus. I remember taking my camera out at night and just snapping pictures in the sky. Later, I came in to analyze them and saw all kinds of flying worm-like 
creatures, and caught them in multiple frames. Here was a little something that I accidentally caught in a video, and it was shared by a viewer. And here I just couldn't not share this, if not part of this random share. In a past video that I published called Deadwood, South Dakota, which was supposed to be the temporary title, somebody pointed out in the comments at minute 1759, while I'm just recording this beautiful landscape in Colorado, out the window, that you could see something shoot by super speed, pop in and out of the frame. And I was excited. I jumped on, and here it was. Here it is. Looks like some kind of vehicle with uh, a wing, almost like a plane, but if you see it in the video, it moves at such a high speed. You have to play it real slow and kind of pause on and off. The first time I got lucky and just nailed it right away. And good find. I love the things that you guys catch. And if you didn't know, I live miles from the famous Skinwalker Ranch. A hot spot for paranormal activity. And I don't think it's exclusive to the ranch, but it's gotten all the fame. And one day I went for a little hike, and my truck blew up. I seized the motor, and it took me about five years to go back out to this spot. And here it is. Here I went on a hike approximately 2.4 miles from Skinwalker Ranch. Skinwalker Ranch, of course, famous for its paranormal activity. I first heard of the Skinwalker in 1994 while attending my first year of college, and ultimately my last year. The Native American girl, a Navajo in northern Arizona is where we were, Flagstaff, talked about driving up north from Flagstaff to Page, the infamous Highway 89, and she looked over, and they were driving about 65, 70 miles an hour. She looks over, and a wolf was running next to their car, and this was around sunset. And she screamed, as a little girl would, or maybe anyone. And her father looked over and saw what she saw, and he told her, stop looking at it. You're giving it energy. And it was not shocking to her father. And she simply was scolded by him for entertaining the Skinwalker, or Shapeshifter. Here, this ranch, the Skinwalker Ranch, is said to have similar stories, but in my opinion, not exclusive to this area. This phenomenon spanning the entire Southwest. But this, in particular, is my backyard. And I tried exploring this exact site about five years ago. I was very excited and drove my little Ford Ranger with 290,000 miles on it out here. And again, this is my backyard, and the Ranger had fresh synthetic oil that I changed every 3,500 miles. Many people told me this was excessive. But nevertheless, when you get to an area like this, one will begin to experience all kinds of unusual phenomenon, physically and energetically. And while approaching this area, it is very strange. I pass by it all the time, and seldom take this little off-road leading to this site. And this is an absolute dead zone. But I recently watched a video and somebody shared this, just a picture at the end of their video, and I became very excited and remembered something that I'd forgotten. And my dog and I quickly jumped in our new truck, well, it's a 2012, but not the old Ranger, that died on me last time I tried to explore this site, and we were off. Within 10 minutes, we were at the foothills of this site, two plus miles away from the Skinwalker Ranch. And let's have a little look at what I saw. So here I've kicked the drone up, and I'll be returning soon. I should have just walked up to the base, but the light was good, 
and I wanted to make sure I got some good drone footage. So here we are, looking at this anomaly. Again, this is just west of Skinwalker Ranch. The ranch would be back here, to the right. Back over here would be Highway 40. And back over here is Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain has passed Vernal. And Vernal is 30 miles away. And Blue Mountain is easily another 15 or 20. Try to make sense of that. And back here even further, we can see Dinosaur National Monument and essentially Colorado, another 15 miles past Blue Mountain. And that's looking straight east. So here we go a little closer. And I've hiked around this one. This one is really fascinating. And I've even hiked around here, but never this portion in which I finally found myself. So here you can see it disappears into the mud, into the new and very recent mud, and really forget about a tree growing in here, because it's all solid, it's all this, different layers, essentially. Level, level, level. And I think if we excavated these pyramids or structures, we would have a whole different understanding of what we're looking at. Here we can see it from the top, and we can see how the debris forms. The shelf just collapses, and here we can see it slip into the top, the mountain, and here we might have a little access, it looks like. And at some point, something really interesting. Here we can see it from the other side. Well, I'm really not sure what happened to the rest of that segment. But let's move on. And one of the weirdest things to wrap our head around is time. This next segment asks the question of whether or not time can speed up or slow down. Sometimes I just want to talk about other things. Here's a BS composite image. Admittedly, a giant North America. But yes, has everything been said? I don't think so. I think there's a lot more. I still think we know nothing. And so here's something new. Something I've not seen on the internet. As far as weird things on the internet. And this is weird, but it will be presented as a scientific fact, which is usually even weirder than reality. So it says here the Earth records the shortest day ever after scientists reveal the planet is spinning faster. Now, most of you know I don't believe we're flying through space at a million miles an hour. I don't believe the Earth is spinning at over a thousand miles an hour. So much spinning and flying. But nonetheless, I listen to what people have to say and interpret it my own way. I'm free to do so, still. Now, rather than us spinning around out of control, in this case, faster on this particular day, it is my belief that the luminaries are moving like a clock. But in this case, Whatever you believe, it's still pretty interesting. The fact that they tell us we had a shorter day, and they tell us they had to make adjustments, and most people went on and didn't even know. Maybe they felt good that day. They worked a little less. However, they'd been tricked, or simply been unaware of the variance of time. These days, with clocks being digital and they controlling them, Unless you have an analog, and you're constantly fighting to reset it to this digital time that we discover is false. As they tell us here, scientists, I wish I had set an old clock 20 years ago. An off-grid clock? It'd be interesting to see the difference. And frankly, this doesn't make any sense. If we were just flying through space at a million miles an hour, the Earth is spinning at over a thousand, that suddenly there would just be a speedier spin, and that they would record this? So what do they say? The rotation was 
9 milliseconds shorter. The fast pace spin occurred on June 29th. A headache for time watchers. That's because Earth's rotation is usually slowing down. Again, this is what they say. In fact, we had to add 27 leap seconds in the last 50 years to keep the clocks in check. Clocks paused most recently in 2016 to account for this strange astronomical effect. Now Earth's spin appears to be speeding up and scientists aren't exactly sure why. Usually days get longer and they tell us this has to do with the tugging by the sun and the moon. But June 29th marks the shortest day so far in a five-year trend of shrinking days. It was the fastest that midnight had ever arrived since measurements began in 1960. According to data from the International Earth Rotation and Reference System Service, what a joke, just around the time of the fake moon landing, they begin taking measurements, or falsifying them, and then they give us some stupid dinosaur speculation that days were even shorter. One theory is that the speeding up may be linked to the Chandler wobble, small deviation in Earth's excess. A smoothing out of the spin could lead to a faster rotation overall. Just ridiculous. But lots of factors can affect how fast the Earth rotates, including the climate and geological movements. That's it, so climate now will affect this grand space journey that we're on. It's unclear how long the rotation will continue, but they might remove leap seconds as a solution. And overall, I just wanted to share this article with you. It's just fascinating to me. Could you do this slowly, like a frog in a boiling pot of water? Would we just accept the new cycle? I mean, what if the cycle was out of whack and the luminaries just did something completely different? What if it began setting from our perspective and rising at crazy times? Would people continue to go to sleep or go to work? Would they obey the natural cycle or the one imposed on them by society? And their civil duties, oftentimes self-chosen. I don't know. As a child, I used to imagine north being south and switching east and west or just something like that. And I was able to change the entire feeling and perspective that I had. And it was very powerful. So much so that I have a hard time doing it today. As simple as it sounds. So for this week, I think that's it. This was definitely an experimental video. I hope you enjoyed. I love you all. God bless. And I'll see you next week.